I have countless, countless journal entries. All of it, all of it is about love. And anytime I was obsessed, I would write it down. I have countless, countless notes of my obsessions that I have all scattered around my things. And for a long time, I thought that that's what love was, an obsession over somebody, over somebody that no longer wanted you, that no longer loved you. And it made me think a lot about the difference between love and limerence. And limerence is a state of obsession, of idealization of another person as them being the perfect one for you. But they don't give you that reassurance or that knowing that you desire. And so your mind creates up scenarios of the perfect person. The one, I guess you could say. And I often find myself fantasizing about the one. And a lot of the times, I'm not the only one writing about love in such an obsessive manner. You know, that's how we've been taught to know that that's what love is supposed to look like. From our writers, from our people on TV, from things that we consume. We believe that love is supposed to be an obsession, something that you cannot get out of your mind. And because you feel like you cannot get them out of your mind, then they must be the one. No matter how much you put yourself out there, no matter how much you write about them, it is still just an obsession. And oftentimes, limerence feels so much better than true love. Because love is slow. Love is reciprocal. Love is respectful. And love is truly knowing the other person for the human being that they are, wholly. And it takes time to build that. Limerence is this high that you chase. And when that person gives you a little bit of attention or affection. And limerence is a state of obsession that is almost incontrollable. It is constantly a, a figure of your mind because you convince yourself that this person is the one. The one that will solve you. The one that will fix you. And as women, we fall into that trap of romanticizing and idealizing. And that's why we read Romantic novels, that's why we watch romantic movies, because we crave that, we crave that obsession. Because we've been taught that this is what love is supposed to look like. A constant obsession, a, a flurry of passion, where you feel like you are completely intertangled with another human being. There's a quote that I read earlier today that inspired me to make this particular type of video. And this is a quote by author Emily Bronte, and the quote goes, If you ever looked at me once with what I know is in you, I would be your slave. And it's funny because this quote, it is almost an idealization. You think that, or you hope that they are the way that you want them to be. And part of us want to submit to that perfect person, that romantic idea of our soulmate, of the one that will inevitably be able to fix us. And we get so obsessed with that idea, that idea that another person can truly wholly fill us. This love that we seek is simply just the state of limerence. And I think we were taught that love should look like limerence. It should be obsessive. It has taught us that our ideas and our fantasies could be achieved. There's another quote that comes to mind by my favorite author, Kafka, and it goes, You are the knife I turn inside myself. That is love. That, my dear, is love. And it begs the question if 
if this eternal suffering, the suffering that is caused by limerence, by obsessing over another person and hoping that they give us that reassurance that they feel the same way, is that obsession, that fantasy, that hope that the person could be the one, is that not what true love is? And we can argue about the meaning of love and what it is and what it feels like, but a lot of the times the obsession, the limerence, feels so much more intense and so much more electrifying, so much more passionate. It is unlike anything you could ever experience. We feel as though another person is the object of our desire, it is the object that will fix us, the person that will fix us. And for those of you who have experienced limerence, who are like me, who often daydream about the one, if that the one certainly exists, you project your desires onto them and you think that they have all of those things that you want them to have, but in reality, when you look at it from the outside, you realize that they don't. Love is a slow, slow connection. It is something that builds up over time. It is something that doesn't feel as intensely. You simply just are. Love is a, is a state, is a being. What you realize is that it is unconditional almost. It is free. It is without this holding on to the person to give us a sort of meaning. It is in letting them be, regardless if they're there for you or not. True love is an, almost an unconditional love, where you accept the person wholly for who they are. And you can only do that after years and years of knowing them. Our minds are, we have the greatest absolute imagination. We can live within our imagination. I know I can. I mean, look at this fuck. Look at this. Look at this. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this shit I've written. <laughs> and, and people will continue to write about it. And people will continue to feel it. And people will continue to experience pain and suffering over love and thinking that that is love. It is maybe a form of, but it isn't true love. It is simply limerence. And I think that a lot of us were taught by the world around us that love should look like obsession, like fantasy. And when it isn't, when it is simple and easy, that that isn't love that that is just boring <laughs> because limerence gives you this inexplicable dopamine high where literally you cannot think of anything else it almost becomes like a coping mechanism you envision your life together with this person and you have this innate belief that that they that they are the one and you feel you almost even have like a spiritual awakening because of this, because it, it feels so intensely and so out of control that it almost feels like a divine intervention, like fate. Or maybe it is and I'm just being pessimistic. I don't know, I'm just a 26 year old, I don't really know much, but I'm not a therapist. I'm not somebody who's going to tell you what it means to love or how it looks like for you or I can just simply talk about it from my own experience. And that is that oftentimes the obsession feels much better than reality. So if you're somebody who's love obsessed, I guess you could say, maybe we've been wrong all along. Or maybe we're right. Maybe the one or the soulmate does exist. And I think we ought to wake up to reality. But man, is it ever difficult to. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day. Bye. <laughs>